Good evening and welcome to our third edition this season of Friday Night Frenzy. I'm Rich Cuzzolino alongside Brandon Thompson. Brandon, another Friday behind us. And a lot is still to come. I'm back by popular demand. I might have been the only one demanding right. it, but filling in for you last week, filling in for Troy this week. I'm having a lot of fun following the football. I'm enjoying it. Troy is making his way back from Montana. Mm -hmm. So we're here. Let's start tonight with the game closest to home. The Palisade Bulldogs look to take down their first and only Valley team this season, the Central Warriors. Central junior quarterback Max Marsh has led the Warriors to a strong 2-1 start to their season. The Palisades head coach Joe Romano has his Bulldogs perfect on the air and intends to keep it that way. Second quarter, almost disaster for the Warriors. A handoff muffed. Running back Anthony Zubiati falls on the ball. That allows the drive to continue. Later on, just a few plays later, 35-yard handoff here. Anthony Zubiati making his way right. There he goes, breaking tackles down the sideline. That's a Central Warriors touchdown, 7-0. Next Palisade drive after some favorable field position. Palisade senior running back Jason Bruce from the 48-yard line. He deked out the camera, Brandon. The camera, what the are you doing? Man? It was me. 33-yard rush down the <laughs> sideline, down to the 19. Later in the drive, just about six and a half to go here. Quarterback Cam Tucker, let's keep it himself. Three-yard rush, touchdown after a scoreless first quarter. Game tied up 7-7 apiece at half. However, the Palisade Bulldogs survive 19-14. They remain a perfect 3-0 on the year. Central drops back down to 500. The Bulldogs season not getting any easier. They take on the Montrose Indians next week from the Indians High School. Come back, kids in Palisade. Now, it wasn't homecoming in Delta tonight, but the boys were coming home. Panthers split two of their first games on the road. They had a familiar foe in their home opener. The Panthers, but they're from Montezuma Cortez. All right, let's go to the jungle. And Delta There's wanting no to put on a good show for their home crowd. We'll get a close-up of them in a second, but Gage Lockhart gets it started the right way, finding Skyler Ufre right down the far sideline for a big game and the red zone chance. Lockhart takes a couple shots, just can't get on the same page with his receiver here. So on this drive, Delta settles for the field goal. Now this shot coming up here, Richie, this is for me. It's a sunset on Mount Sneffels, our closest 14er, oh, but gorgeous. Montezuma, they had their own mountains to climb. Ty Blackmer chased out of the pocket, finds Vincent Coughlin. That's a 25-yard play, and the visiting Panthers are on the five. Good rumbling and bumbling. I like this offense. Make it the legs it, work, but now Blackmer again finds numero uno, Tegan White Skunk, but there's nothing <laughs> smelly here. Okay, probably their pads, but Lockhart showing off his arm again, finds Luke Wortman. He's putting in work, man, to get that jump wow. ball. Home crowd loving it. Lockhart must have learned something from the last red zone trip. He takes it himself, heads towards the goal line. He goes for the pylon. He dives. Is he in? The ref says he is. Delta holds on to that lead for the 19-14 win. And a winning record at that. Not bad. Same score last two games. Let's head out to Coleridge now. The high school, the Titans were home against the Paonia Eagles. Late in the first quarter, Paonia quarterback Gary Neal drops back, fires it to the corner. And so check out this catch, Brandon. Ooh. Number five, Sol Connolly. Dive for it. Refs call that a touchdown. Eagles up by six after a mixed, missed extra point. Let's go to Pena now, threatening it again in the second as Neal hits a wide open. Carlos Lozano for no the one. score. Yeah, no let's one him, in the area let's code. trot in there. Eagles up 12 zip. Titans really unable to get anything going offensively. Here's one of three Colby Hoffman picks in the first half, including that one. Set up Peña again. Eagles looking to bust the game open. Hit number 11, Anthony Felice on the slant. Big man breaking a few tackles all the way to the house. 60 yards for the score. It looks like me. Right there, you see that? No, Look you waddle, speed. Richie. We learned that yesterday Look at Men in Heels. Speed. Panda would go up at the half. 19 to nothing. Titans really just unable to mount a comeback. 19 to nothing would be the final score. Panda improves to 2 and 1 and will play at home against Basalt next week. Cole Ridge drops to 1 and 2. They're taking on Olathe next week. The Pirates. Brandon, what's next? All right, the Front Range is next. Undefeated Rifle Bears headed east to Pueblo County for an out of league showdown with the Hornets. Let's go right to it. Pueblo's. QB senior Anthony Piscata goes deep, caught down the sideline to the 20 yard line. Now later in this drive, Piscata again, he does it with his legs. See, this is how you run, Richie. 23 Long yards. Long strides, huh? To the house, that's right. Then it's rifles turn bears. Triple option rush to Levi Warfolks coming up here. Gets a lot of teams. Cheerleaders. Crowd loves it. Crowd's to cheer. But here's this triple option right there. Levi Warfolk at the outside now. Coming up next, they're just going to keep working it down the field. They're inside the 10-yard line. And this time, it's Tanner Vines finishes off the drive, dives into the end zone. Nine-yard rushing touchdown right there. Rifle scored 113 points in the first three games. 
take down the Hornets too, 35-14. Can't not that. be stopped, those rifle bears. Mm -hmm. We'll find out later in the season. Let's take a look at some other games involving our favorite Western Slope teams. If you didn't catch our coverage last night, the Grand Junction Tigers rallied to score the last 22 points against the Liberty Lancers, all of those actually in the second half. They went Thursday against Liberty, 28-14 to return to even on the year. And in upset this evening from the front range, the Chatfield Chargers are undefeated no more. Fruta Wildcats head into Littleton and put up 38 points. Settle, the Chargers rather, settle with 27. Fruta will pick up steam before next week's major Valley rivalry against those aforementioned Tigers. That should be a good one. That kind of breaks my heart. I'm Chatfield Charger. That's where I went to high no school. No kidding. But Fruita team Go got to root for the home team. <laughs> Speaking of undefeated teams, the Durango Demons smack down the Bayfield Wolverines this evening. 32-16. to Wolverines lose their first of this season to their rivals in red. This is also the first year the teams played for a trophy in the Valacito Bowl. That's named after the lake that separates the two towns. From undefeated teams to winless teams, Grand Valley gets their first win of the season in a big way. 42 nada over Lake County. First one of the season for Grand Valley. Bad news for a couple Western Slope teams this evening, though. The Cedar Edge Bruins get crushed by a strong Aspen Skiers team. Austin Colbert of the Aspen Times reported the last score of the game came on a safety after a bad Cedar Edge punt. 48 to 12, the final score there. And Olathe couldn't handle Centuri tonight. They lose 39 to 9. They drop to 1 and 2 on the year. Now, Brandon, just because we're done reporting the scores doesn't mean the segment is over. That's if you know, right. far from it. Oh. Time to take a look at our favorite plays of the week. One of the best times of this weekend. Absolutely. A lot of good games. It takes a lot of athleticism to get us there. We start with the first game. Central pass in the second quarter. Gets tipped at the line, but check out Cole Taylor. Keep your eyes on the balls, kids. <laughs> That's how you get going in the game. Now it's catching and salvages a few yards for the king. It goes off the lineman's helmet. Yeah. What is happening there? Mr. See, Marsh. <laughs> as a lineman myself, I always wanted to catch the ball, but not get knocked in the back of the head with it. You know, but your team got some yards. Yeah. So, yeah. I, you know. There you go. I it think that's worth it. It a little trickery in the <laughs> unconventional way. Well, let's go to play of the week number two. From Coleridge Peony game as quarterback, Gary Neal drops back and fires for the corner end zone. You just saw this one. Wide receiver, Sol Connolly. I can't get over Stretch it. it out and make the grab. Let's watch it again. That is unbelievable. Yeah, would that be a catch in the NFL? I don't know, but this I, one I sure be. would be. Lockhart finds Workman, and oh, he keeps it all the way to the ground. And you know what? It always looks better in slow motion. Freeze frame. He's got it right there. Putting in Workman. To the ground. There he goes. He's got that. It's not a, Not a catch, right? DB on his back. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> Now we're going to stay with Delta for our Fan of the Week, should I say Fans of the Week. Now you've heard of a drum line, but the Delta student section pulls out the bucket line. Yeah. Right I play well in basketball season, Richie, you know. Getting buckets. getting buckets, I like that. Yeah, yeah. You can play some music on those buckets, you can drop them in It's the a multi-sport crowd there down <laughs> in Delta, and you can tell they're passionate. That's a they lot. Love it down there. Loud crowd, too. All right, Brandon, let's talk a little bit about your alma mater now. This Colorado. Now that the Chatfield uh, now, alma, mater, alma mater went down, but good for the Fruit, fruit Wild Guests. We're hoping that, you know, this alma mater did a little bit better. We're talking so about too. the CMU football team. Now, they're off to a very good start this season. Wins over South Dakota Mines and Eastern New Mexico gives the Mavs a 2 nothing start. They are also ranked 19th nationally in the latest Division II coaches poll. However, they are headed to Gunnison tomorrow and will play Western State Colorado at the Mountaineer Bowl in Gunnison. You ever been to Gunnison, Brandon? I have. Nice area. It was in the summertime. Don't go in the winter. It's like negative <laughs> 40 every day. This might That's be why. That's an exaggeration. Highest collegiate track and field, track and football field in the world at 7,769 feet. My goodness. The Mountaineers are windless on the year, but have played some tough opponents. I can't breathe thinking about that. Last <laughs> week, the Mavs took care of a pesky triple option team this week. Fittingly, the team is in the mountains. It's all about the air raid offense. Need some climatize. <laughs> Man, we guys, we have to condition a lot more. <laughs> and we just have to, uh, like, we played triple option last last week. Now we're going to a spread team that likes to throw the ball around. And so we just, we just have to get into that great mentality of playing fast playing their spread team and just knowing that they're going to throw the ball a lot. Yeah. Man, we look amazing. Like, I've never been a part of a team that that just has a brotherhood, such a such a great camaraderie, and just have great great chemistry. And I'm, I'm glad to be a part of it. All right, CMU, 1 p.m. on Saturday against those Mountaineers. Predictions? Should be a good game. Hopefully, the, I mean, i got to go with the maps. Of course, Always right? do. I'm biased. Week so. three is behind us already. Thank you so much it for watching. Have a great Friday night. See ya. Hopefully I'm back.